Hi there, in this video I'm going to take you through making some salmon skin leather and I'm hoping to turn this to this lightly tanned, lightly smoked fish skin leather What I'm going to aim to do is literally using nothing more than a spoon and a small sharp knife. <clears throat> I'm going to do a combination of just getting under little bits of flesh where there's big bits and slicing them off. But obviously, I'm mindful that I might damage the skin because here you can see it's actually right down to the, to the uh, skin itself. But again, most of the action with the spoon and the knife would literally just be scraping action like this it just comes off there we go and that patch there is looking nice and white already but again It'll still take a little bit of tidying up because you want to make sure you get as much of the, the, the meat and sinewy bits, if that's what you want to call them off. And then once that's done, I'll flip it over and again with a knife, going against the grain, so from tail to head, I'll be flicking the scales off. But that's a whole new ball game that because they go everywhere. So if you can, do it outside or somewhere that your wife's not going to give you a, a telling off. I'm going to do a quick close-up as well on these scales. You can see they ping off all right. Although earlier I did get one in my eye, but it bounced out luckily. And can you see this lovely patterning that we've got coming, where the scales are now vacant and there's a little uh, area where it used to sit. It's lovely. And when it starts to take the tannin soup, as I call it, on board, <coughs> they they seem to have show up even better than they are now. Now we just look at that. It's lovely. The only things with this, worth noting as well, that when you're scraping the flesh side, the, the bit down the middle seems to be the more tenacious to get off, and indeed the scales along this middle bit as well, where the lateral line went, uh, sometimes they'll stick out just at an angle and, and as you ping them they won't come, so they need a little bit of fine detail work on them. Well, I've made progress uh, through the skins. I've got two done today. <clears throat> I'll just show you the difference. This one here is quite clearly one that still needs processing. It's quite heavy, <clears throat> quite floppy. It will obviously take a bit of work to do the flesh and the scale sides. This, on the other hand, is what you're left with. It looks more like a snake skin. Very much like a snake skin, actually. <clears throat> now, that's been defleshed and descaled. There's still scales kicking about on it but most of them are, are just loose ones and I'll again <clears throat> I'll check that through before it goes into the tannin mixture because obviously if you miss any it means that the area will potentially not be as dark a colour as the rest of it. So there's your floppy one. Let's hold this one up as a contrast. There. Lovely. Great fun. But I can't get my wife and uh, youngest to join me in helping scrape them yet. I'll keep working on them. Show you this at the end of this piece here. There's some stringy bits which you can probably see there. These just occur, especially near the tail. And well, I could probably scrape a few more of these off, but they seem to be just things that keep, once you scrape them, keep coming and coming. And it, I find when you actually do the uh, stretching of the hide that you have to actually scrape those off at the end. They don't seem to affect the colour, but I just thought I'd raise that and hopefully. Um, we'll see that as we go further along in the process. So I'm just going to give the fish skins a wash in this washing up liquid solution. Uh, it just gets the last little bits off and gets rid of this fishy smell. Um, now the previous time I did this I made a schoolboy error and without thinking I ran hot water uh, into the, which basically made the structure break when I tried to do anything with the skin. So I'm using some footage from before, but I don't think there's going to be any continuity errors, but if there are, <laughs> that's why. 
Try the clean uh, skins, then go into a mix of eight or so egg yolks, not the whites, just the yolks. And that's mixed in with the uh, skins for a day or so, which helps to soften them. Additionally, uh, you use brains of the animal, so there's supposed to be enough brains in each animal to tan its own skin. But I've tried in the past to, to hunt down brains from a salmon, and there's not a lot going on. I think they're just designed to swim, eat, and breed. So eggs make a good substitute. This is one benefit of using the egg yolks for the salmon to soften the skin. It gives you all the egg whites to make a super meringue. Right, when I make the tannin uh, solution out of uh, bark that I'll, I'll gently boil, there is something that I'm going to use that's an everyday item to actually kind of, um, I suppose, pad it out a little bit and make it go further. Tea bags. I think I might need a bigger container. So, slightly laborious bit where I'm going to chop all the willow and oak bark up to make my tannin soup, which I'll also add the tea bags to that I saved, which are currently stored in my freezer. So, this is the start of it. I've just put it on. That's three of these kettles full of water, which I'll work the amounts out, I'll put in the notes later. Um, and that's about 0.9 of a kilo of bark I've chopped there, plus straight from the freezer, we've got quite a lot of tea bags there, that's just over half a kilo. So once they get softened, I'll give that a push down. I'll leave that sort of ticking over for about an hour, but I will of course put the lid on because I don't want the liquid that's in there to come away. Right, I've just unlidded it after about an hour, and that's just a little bit of test um, kitchen roll that I put in there. It's got a really nice colour actually, so I'm quite pleased with that. Now, <clears throat> there's benign wood that I've got in here in tea bags, so sometimes, I do a little taste to see how strong it is. Um, I won't on this occasion because I can see it is a really dark colour. I mean obviously don't do that if it's you're using woods that might be poisonous uh, to your good self. Uh, so what I'm going to do is nothing more complicated now. I can start sieving it through a funnel lined with a bit of kitchen roll to get the, the bark out. I'm just going to put it in old clean milk bottles and then once I've got that squared away I'll put a little bit more water back in and just reuse the bark. Um, it should still be quite strong but even if it's not I can use that as the uh, initial weak solution that I put the skins in. Ideally I'd do this once the mixture's cooled down because it does deform the bottle somewhat but I'm a bit strapped for time so I'm just doing this slowly but surely, little by little. You can see the colour just in there of how nice and dark this is, really good. Certainly not the most glamorous of shots, this is the uh, skins in with initially uh, a tannin mixture which is about <clears throat> two to five with water, two parts mixture and uh, five parts water. And what I've actually done this time, I've, instead of using a lot of the mixture I've been throwing spare tea bags in as and when I've got them. Uh, as well as putting more tannin mixture in. And what I'll ultimately do in a couple of days time, I'll take a little bit of this sort of dilute mixture out and I'll put more of a neat mixture in. So this is how we're going at the moment. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's obviously smoking it um, and then the, we have the possibility of putting a little bit of coconut oil on it as well which will help darken it. So whatever colour it takes, it takes. Um, I'm not professing to be an expert on uh, on using the bark mixtures but every little helps to the colour. So you can see they've been in the tannin mixture for about seven days or so and I'm just letting them have a little drip dry uh, on the washing line. Uh, the colour looks to have taken quite well but we'll see. What, what the proof will be in when I start scraping them or stretching them I should say. Now, I haven't got time to deal with these now so they're going to go back in the freezer rolled up and then when I've got time to stretch them I'll get them out. So here I am blinking in the daylight. I think I've had my uh, family's uh, contribution to helping me do these. Cup of tea. I don't think I'll ever get them to help me with these of course. Um, so what I'm going to do now is get as much water as I can out of it using the washing line behind me and then we really are on to beasting the skins to get them nice and supple. Okay I'm going to sort of make a kind of um, ring out of the skin here and I'll show you how to do that. Although I've never done um, hide tanning I believe it's the same principle but on this one put the skin over tail first 
and you wrap the other end over like that and you fold it in thirds so it's one third and then the next third comes over like this it forms it up just so like that and doing it this way with the flesh side down it means all that lovely patterning is kept safe inside and you just put a stick in like this and then you just twist and twist and twist keeping your sleeves out of the way because any minute now there you see that it's dripping so just keep twisting and twisting I can see all the water forming here now or the tanning bark I should say I'll just keep doing that till it drips no more so now the fun starts everything else is done and even now it's wrung out it actually feels a little bit like leather now albeit wet leather <clears throat> so I'm going to use my little device and I'm going to slowly start doing it that way all the way along and I'll do it sideways all the way along and then I'll start doing it diagonally again all the way along in both planes so I'm going to be using this possibly this might use this or this I've been stretching the skin for a little while it's coming on you can see the light slowly coming through it these bits I was on about on the back slowly coming off you can start to see just that it's starting to get lighter as you scrape those bits off and if you compare it to the colour of this unscraped one it's a shame that colour goes and you always see it out and maybe there's a way of stopping it but because that is going to be the inside whereas this still here is going to be the bit that we're going to be using so you can see it's, this bit's the soggy wet bit and this bit's now the slightly stretched version so I'm now at the stage finally where I can start smoking the uh, skins I'll just show you them first one a little disappointed with this it started to show a couple of rips at the top which I stitched and that was fine and then just some approaching the end I managed to put a great big rip in it appeared out of nowhere so this hasn't quite been given the working that I would like it to have had but it's still highly usable and this is the last one I've got here a lot lot better you can actually feel the difference between this and the first one now the points for me this this tip here it almost seems to be unworkable I can never get those soft and also down near the tail as well that gets a little bit stiff but overall really pleased with that bit and that bit's all right and what I'm going to do I've made a little smoking uh, stand up at the top of the garden the winds picked up just as I put it out there of course so what I'm going to do I'm going to put some punk wood in this and a little honey stove should have enough to give it a, a decent smoke but if not I'll just use uh, the smoker out of my uh, hot smoking kit from Pro-Q what I'm also going to do because it's windy I'll put it on a little trivet as well to raise it up within the, the stand and this is the shelter I've made <coughs> um, I sorted through my wood pile and we haven't got any more long sticks really to make a big shelter out of because they're all a little bit old so a bamboo one it is a little bit of plastic around it now unfortunately because the wind's picked up it's it's had to be jacked so hopefully we'll be able to do this today but that's all you need um, apparently when you're smoking buckskin you form it into a, like a funnel uh, to let the smoke go up so because the um, skins are quite long I'm literally just going to hang them at the top of this on a little wire and bamboo frame there just let them hang down Right, I'm using punk wood for this. This is the sort of very rotten wood that you can almost snap with your fingers because it's high smoke and low heat and the last thing you need with your skins when you're smoking them is heat. So what I've done, I've got a little bit of uh, waxed um, fire lighter under here. I'm going to give that a zap with my ferro rod. There we go. So I'll just let that catch and then when it's smoking I'll shove that under the skins. As you can see that smoke's coming already. It's 
So, the skins have had about half a day smoking. Uh, I supplemented the, the punk wood, which I think would have lasted for about two thirds of the, the time with uh, the little Pro-Q metal smoking tray, um, just to make sure they got a little bit, because what started off as a really nice, clear, still frosty morning, turned into uh, a bit of a windy, uh, hooly sort of day. Um, so they didn't get quite as much smoke contact as I would like. But, having said that, you know, the colour's not changed much, but I'm still really happy with this. this is possibly one of the better bits that I've ever done. Um, you can also put uh, coconut oil on and I'm saying that I'm going by uh, there's an article in Bosch Crescent Survival Skills magazine um, to, to obviously soften them up a little bit more but it darkens the colour quite a lot um, and to be honest I'm quite happy with this so I'm not going to bother so that's it job done.